Hello, my name is Matt Hatel Masri, and today I'm going to show you how you can use Google Charts, which is free with ASP.NET application. My version of .NET that I'm using at this moment is version 6.0.100. So let us get started. I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code and do most of my work from the command line. To start with, I want to take the data that exists on an API endpoint, read the data in my application and generate a set of charts from that API. So as an example, I'm going to read data from this API and the address of this API is northwind.versel.app slash API orders and it delivers data in this format. You can see here that we get ID, customer ID, employee ID and so on and so forth. So this represents one JSON object and there's an array of multiple JSON objects. What I'm going to attempt to do is to create a chart of orders by city. So we're going to grab the number of orders say in the city of Lander and order count in the city of Ulu and so on and so forth. I will be using Google Data Table Library. This is a new Git package and this is the address on GitHub for this particular package. This package facilitates the process of generating the JSON object that's going to be ingested by Google Charts in order to generate the chart. On the ASP.NET side, I will be creating a Razor Pages application. Let's start a new application. We go .NET, new Razor, and I want to use the framework .NET 6.0 and I will call the application orders charts razor google wrapper. The reason I use the word wrapper is because the NuGet package that I'm using is officially called the Google Data Table Wrapper. So let's hit enter here and it will create for us a razor pages application. Let me go into that folder and the one package that we need is this Google Data Table .NET wrapper. So let me add this NuGet package to my application. I'll go .NET add package Google dot data table dot .NET dot wrapper, and that's being added to my project. Let's inspect the JSON object that we will be working with. So this entire JSON object represents an order and within that order there's another JSON object ship address that represents an address object. So when we model our JSON object we will model first the address object and then we will model the order object that contains an address object. As far as these properties are concerned there is no need to represent each property. We will pick and choose the properties that really matter to us. So let me open my project in Visual Studio Code. I'm just typing code dot and it will open up for me my workspace in Visual Studio Code. Now I will create a models folder here to contain the two models classes that I will be creating. And in this models folder, I want to add two classes. The first class will simply be the address class and the second class will be an order class. My address class would look like this. Let me format it and let me resolve these classes. So I'm just going to import system.text.json.serialization. So what I've got here are the street, the city, the region, and the country. Now this attribute represents the name of the property in the JSON object. And this property here represents the name of the object in my application. So the other object that I want to model is the order object and my order object is going to look like this. Again let me format it and let me resolve the appropriate namespace here and as you can see we are modeling these properties ID, custom ID, employee ID, etc, etc. And I want to mention here that I'm not really modeling all the properties because some of the properties I don't really need them for what I'm trying to do here. Like for example the dates, I just ignored the dates because I'm not interested in the dates. What I'm interested in for my example here is the orders by city. The truth is the address is very important 
and some of the properties of the order are important. So we're pretty much done with the two classes that we need that represent our JSON object. So I shall close these classes. The next thing I want to do is to create a page. I will create a new file under the pages folder and the file name is going to be chart data dot cshtml and also under the same folder i'll create another file which is the code behind and that will be called chart data dot cshtml dot cs so these would come in pairs this is the view and this is the code behind page inside the view i'm going to put bare bones code so let's open up the view and the view is just going to say that it's a page and it's modeled on this class now i have a squiggly here because it doesn't have this class it can't find it i'm going to create here a class that's called chart model so let's type that in public class chart data model and this inherits from page model now this would belong to the namespace by the name of the application itself so let's put in a proper namespace here and let the namespace be this this is the name of our app and this is the folder now i need to resolve this so let's resolve this using razor pages and that's done now we need to have a private variable which is the logger i'm going to paste that here constructor for this class and the constructor will look like this let's first add a helper method that's going to go to the api endpoint read the data and deserialize it into an array of orders here is the method this method will return an array of order objects it uses http client that makes a get request to this endpoint returns a stream and that stream is deserialized into an array of orders and the array of orders is returned by this method now let us add the on get method method for our razor page and this on get method let it simply return some sort of content we can just get it to return null now this has to be resolved so let us resolve this now just to test our get orders async method let us do this let us declare an order array call it orders and let's just call this method by using await get orders async and we can put a breakpoint right here to test our application to see whether it's getting any data from our endpoint let's just use the debugger here and go so it's going to open up in a browser and here's our browser to get to that endpoint we have to go slash chart data and when we do that it stops at this breakpoint now let's just inspect this and you can see that it is pulling data that gives us a sense of satisfaction let us stop our application and continue building our logic the next thing i want to do is process my data i'll create a link query that counts all the orders by city and that would look something like this i'll take my orders data and i'll group by ship address city the name will be the city the key and for each city we're going to store the count in a column called count we're going to order by descending because we want the cities that have more orders to come before the cities that have less orders having done that we're going to start using the data table wrapper in order to generate JSON objects in the manner that can be ingested by the Google chart library. So to do that, we're going to add some more code here and the code would look like this. Let me just resolve these namespaces. And these namespaces are part of the Google data table.net wrapper column. And that's about it. Now we instantiate a data table object that belongs to this namespace. We add 
two columns. We add a column to represent the name and another column to represent the count. The name is a string, the count is a number. And we're going to iterate through the data. The data is the result of this query here. Create a new row and add cells into that row, one for name, one for count. And then we're going to add that row to the data table. And what we want to return here is this data table DT dot get json this is what this on get method is going to do it is just going to return a json object at this point we can test our application and see what kind of a json object it actually returns so let's go dot net watch run and in order to get to that page we have to go slash chart data and there you go. This is what our JSON object looks like. You can see here that it's got two columns. It's got first column is string and its name and the label is name. The second one is count and the label is count. And the rows are a series of city names and counts. So now that we know what our data looks like, let's just close this. At this point, our data is ready and all we need to do is take that data, use the Google chart library to create charts. The first chart that I'm going to create is the column chart. Of course, there are line charts, there are pie charts and many other kinds of charts. So in order to create a chart, what I will do is go into this index.cshtml. I really don't need this markup here. I'm going to create my own markup using the JavaScript library that Google provides. So I will take some code and put it in here and I'll explain to you how it works. So we're going to be using this Google chart library. All you need to do is open up a script tag and point it to this library. Now, here I've got a div and this is the injection point for my chart. You will notice that at the very bottom here, I'm going to inject the chart into this element here is this one. This is where the magic happens. I'm going to load the chart. These are the packages that are going to be used from the chart library. And then I have a callback. It's going to call a function. Now this is the function. What this function does is it makes a get Ajax request to the page that I created before. So it goes to this endpoint and it's going to get JSON data. JSON data will be represented by this variable. So all that data that I showed you earlier on, it gets read into this variable. You take that variable and you use it when you initialize this Google visualization data table object. This returns a data table object that is a Google data table object. Here are some options. There are a bunch of options that you can add, but the only one that I'm interested in at the moment is giving my chart a title. And the title is going to be orders by city. This is where the chart gets created. The first chart that we're going to be using today is the column chart. So you're going to generate a column chart and using this column chart, we're going to render the chart inside of this element. This is all you need to do. If you go back to your website on the home page, you will see this chart. This is a count of orders by city. And you can see here the title at the top. Now here we're just creating one chart, which is the column chart. If you want to see more types of charts, what I have done is I have created for you the code for seeing the same data being represented in different charts. So if you go into this index.cshtml, I will delete all the markup and code in here and replace it with this. And this is code that is going to create six different charts with the same data. So the top part are the directives that you need to have in each of these view pages. And here I have six div elements, each representing a different kind of chart. So we're going to be rendering the column, line, pie, area, bar, and 3D byte bar chart. This code is the same as what I showed you before. Same with the way that you're making an Ajax request. The only difference is I created a population chart here and it takes two arguments. It takes the data itself and the type of chart that you want to create. There's a switch statement. If it is the line chart, 
it's going to generate a line chart and put the chart in this div element and it's the same logic for each one of the other types of charts there's a small difference here with regard to the pie chart because you want to add another property in the options and it is a property called is 3d and you set that to true and eventually you just draw the chart and return false so if we run our project now let me hit yes here or all and here is the output you can see here that we have data being displayed in the form of a chart this here is the column chart this one here is the line chart this is a pie chart this here is an area chart this one is a bar chart and this one here is a 3d chart when you go over the 3d chart you can pass by each one of these it tells you what the count is for every city now the source code for this demo can be found at this github site if I was a little bit too fast perhaps in showing you the code, you can go and have a look at the code itself by going to the site. I hope you found this demo useful and I'm sure this will help you generate charts for your applications using the free Google Chart Library. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. And until the next video, all the best. Take care.